and we're back. Thanks for holding. We're back. I'm your host, Tyson Lee. Co-host Kyle Williams. And we're talking about City Choice Pension Fund. We're talking about the oversight of the budget mm-hmm. through this commission, this phony, fake commission. You know, another thing, ladies and gentlemen, you may not be connecting both of the uh, together. You're not connecting Flint and the City of Detroit. Mayor Weaver up in Flint has said we're going to sue. What do you mean? You're not telling us what to do. What did they say? This is back in the summer of last year. They said, oh, oh no, no, no. We are, this is just a recommendation. We, we're not demanding that you do anything because they know they're illegal. They know that they are illegal. Y'all believe that crap. She says she don't believe it. She's not thinking about them. Snyder people never wanted her in there anyway. Mm-mm. They went up there to talk about that money, but a Flint resident, so Snyder said, get over it. She's been all on the national news, and they said, oh, he told you to get over it? He said, she said, yeah. And I said, this meeting is over. Mm-hmm. She got up and walked out. What? How did she walk out on the great white man, Gangster Snyder? <laughs> Got up and walked great. out on him. Okay. So, you, it was Snyder, hey, she don't want to fight. They're going into an election year where you, the Democrats, act like Flint wasn't poisoned. The Democrats act like our money wasn't stolen. They, they ain't said a mumbling word. Mm-mm. Don't even so, talk about it. And so what are they going to do? They're going to fade into the background and say, we're not gone. We, we're still here, but we're going to act. We're going to play like we got, we're gone. You don't have to sign this. You don't have to report to us. And unless, and, and, and unless something gets shaky, that's when we'll come back out of the shadow. We're talking about the financial board. That's too simple. They're still collecting the taxes. Are they, look. We're not saying on this show that the state isn't in control. You put Mike Duggan in, Mike Duggan was part of the emergency manager over the schools. And the schools are going down. The EEA was illegal. Look, all the white folks got to say, you colored boys, get your behind over there. And they jump. No uh, look at them, young blood. They jump. EEA had no legal authority. Just put the people in, put the black folks in a school. Did they call EEA? Now, what did they come into existence? A year, year and a half later when they were legally, uh, the state legislature say, oh, we here's a legal educational achievement authority. Before the end, there was nothing legal about them. They just turned over the money. When are we going to realize that they give them the money? Who are the they? The Detroit Public Schools, the school board. These activists are running around here, jumping up and down, talking about we fighting on your behalf. I don't know whose behalf they're fighting over, but they're not fighting over the citizens' behalf. They're not fighting on the school children's behalf, and they ain't won a battle. The schools are going down, down, and down. They close them, close them, close them. You don't hear nobody hollering, raising sand about them closing the school, but they're fighting for you. And the quickest way to get a job is to open up the schools. The quickest way to bring your neighborhood back is to open up the schools. The quickest way to bring your property value up is to open up the Detroit public schools that are closed in your neighborhood before they tear them all down. It's ridiculous. You know, we talk about the school. We say, all oh, the schools, it's the schools, not the churches. You got churches still there. Neighborhood didn't go in the pot. It's the schools. The boulevard, we say Grand, West Grand Boulevard, the boulevard is the demarcation line for the new Detroit and the old Detroit. They're coming up to the, to the boulevard, right, are they right across the boulevard? They got a school 
They got a Detroit public school. They're saving. They have a, uh, they put a police training center in there. City of Detroit don't own that building. How are they swapping these buildings around? Or maybe they're paying rent to them and we don't know it. But they got a police training center in, I think it was called Estabrook. But it's right there on McGraw and Linwood. Few blocks south of the boulevard. Yeah, yeah. That's the redevelopment area. You got to have schools. So all these areas, oh, they going to move in here. All these youngsters, the millennium, Xers, they're going to move in. How are they going to move in? How are you going to move in? They're going to like bring their kids in where there's no school. You got to be crazy. I thought the neighborhood seemed like it's been bombed out. Seemed like that's Iraq now or uh, Syria. Isn't that where they're bombing them now, Syria? Mm -hmm. That's the way it looked. They didn't drop a bomb. They closed the schools. We don't understand what's happening, young blood, and we're looking at it. What they telling us, the dope man is in there. That's why. What dope man? There ain't nobody in there. Who he selling the dog? <laughs> dogs. Who's he selling the dope to? The dogs and the feathers. You got feathers flying around in your neighborhood now. Yeah. Yeah, I seen one other day. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's the pretty looking birds. <laughs> they pretty looking. They got feathers flying around in the city. Coons walking around in the city. Why? Because you got all this vacant property. Right. That's yeah. why. And it's still from the school. And they keep telling us this lie about our children can't learn. It look like the adults are the ones that can't learn and don't know what the, the word defray mean. They put it in the paper. It's to defray the cost. It don't mean, it means to help. It means, it, the fray means to help, to support, to keep you from getting your money cut. That's what the 60-something million dollars was for. Since it wasn't for that, where did it go? What was it used for? Did it all go to the DIA? Did all the money go to them? We need to know. Huh? We need to know where it went to. It went somewhere. What they used it for. It went somewhere. We didn't get it. And so we need to understand what's going on. You know, how, how you going to everybody have their idea, and that's good. I'm not discouraging anybody from calling up here asking this question because we're going to try to give you the same answer we gave you six months ago last month. And hopefully we can come together. We got to put it a different way, though. We got to try to figure out what it is. Look, I know people <laughs> in my family that work for the city that had their pension money taken, and they don't seem to be upset about it. When you talk to them about it and you say, right, hey, look, uh, well, what was you going to do? Uh -uh. I thought you was going to do something. I say, hey, homeboy, they didn't take $68,000 of my money. They take some every month. I think that's a big difference. I say, didn't you tell me they took your money, $68,000, and you refused to write them a letter asking them the name of your insurance company? To start the ball rolling, I can't write the letter for you. I can't sign your name, that forgery. But they don't understand. He That's too it. busy listening to what his boss said. <laughs> his boss, his supervisor, the foreman said, the manager. Oh, they're having some hell of a discussions over there about that money. Mm. But don't none of them know anything. They believe that fool that's in the authority. They running the bus driver or they in the mm. bus driver's yeah, union. Yes. Mm. Now them people over there, the bus driver's union, they, I, they're the craziest one of them all. In order for the bus driver, for the city of Detroit to build those terminals to get those brand new buses, mm. they had to fund the bus driver's pension, and they could not cut them. Or they got to get that money back. I don't see them giving any money back. 
and the bus drivers don't know it. They too crazy. So I'm going on over there. Hmm. Ask me. Got three hundred million dollars. They gave ask me three hundred million dollars back. The firefighters got a hundred fifty million. The police officers association got two hundred and fifty million dollars returned to them. I said return. They never got it from them. They gave this to them hush mouth money from the bankruptcy court. That money should have went to the pensioners that were cut or to shore, shore up the money. It don't make any difference how many times we say that. You can't believe it because the white folks said it. We were down there at the bankruptcy court when they were talking about it. I was down there telling them with no union representing me, and I wanted my money. You giving them $150 million. How do you give them $150 million and you didn't cut the firefighters? How do you give the police $250 million and you didn't cut their pension? Well, the man with the mummy, you couldn't hardly hear him, could you, Carl? He had a microphone. You still couldn't hear. No, you can You very, very like you were whispering but, to but yourself. But you know, look. Here's something we did find. Uh, not there. We didn't find it out there. But here's something was that over a year ago, a couple years ago, we were down there. Here's something I found out recently. They had a form. They had a form that we could fill out requesting our money. That they never told us. Yeah. You didn't get any money. Your lawyer never told you that there was a form. What was it? Two o one. Two o one, something like that. Why oh, they got numbers on their forms? Two o one, one. Go down to the bankruptcy court in the Comerica building. What floor is that? The seventeenth floor. Seventeenth floor. And look over the wall. It's, what do they call it? Uh, uh, the claim of appeal. No, it ain't claim of appeal. A claim. for A claim. Claim for money. Claim for something. But you want to form the claim. Oh, creditor's claim. Creditor's claim, yeah. Should have brought it with me. But don't worry. We digging. And it's a different story when you don't know. And you got all these barriers in front of you. And you got all these people trying to tell you what's going on. But they don't have a bone in the fight. They don't have a dog in the fight, let alone a bone. They don't have nothing in it. But they're trying to tell you about it, and they ain't lifted a finger to do nothing. But we come on this show and tell you all of the stuff that, that the bankruptcy people could be doing. The people that got your money taken could be doing. The people that got your health care benefits cut, what you could be doing. But you know what half of them tell you? Well, you know, I ran this program at the city of Detroit. I ran such and such a program. Arrogant as hell. Oh, yeah. Oh, we listen. But we ain't talking about the program you ran. We're not talking about the program you hit, you started. We're talking about the program that's cutting your money. <laughs> uh, yeah, you got it. Boy. Know. And now, we're telling y'all this. So you can spread the word. Let's take some call. Let's take some call. Carl, are you on the air? Thanks for holding. Hey, good morning, Hassan and Carl. Good, good morning, morning, Reggie. What's going on? Hey, look, you guys are hitting it right on point, man. That just goes to show you how ignorant the majority of the city workers are. They sit here and they allow the union leadership as you guys said, sell them out and just tell them anything. You know, now, Bill Davis, he's got an army. <laughs> he's got over, he's got 23,000 city uh, retirees and their beneficiaries drawing, drawing some type of pension. You would think that they would be raising hell. And this is why, when you talk about uh, Big Daddy, Livonia Mike, 
This is why the voters in Detroit and the city pensioners cannot afford to vote for any candidate that Mike Duggan endorsed and support financially. Well, wait a minute. Hold on. Let me ask you a question. Are you talking about the Bill Davis is head of one of those uh, Darnara, the Detroit, the pension? You talking about the pensioners? Yeah. Are you talking about that Bill Davis that was just elected uh, to the police commissioner? Yeah. Okay. Do you know that he filed the lawsuit himself and he wrote it up? No, I didn't. I didn't know that. All I know is he's got, like I said... Okay, wait, hold it, hold it, hold it now. I, I hear you. Maybe you say you didn't know that, but think about that. Never wrote up a lawsuit to federal court, but he filed it. <laughs> okay. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> I, I mean, come on now. How many times... He's on everybody's show. How many times does he talk about it? How many times does he talk about whatever they did. We went to court, and, and they kick us out. They find us. They do a whole lot of things to us because we be right on the money. Mm -hmm. See, see, this is the things that are happening in what you call present time. Right now, that are happening to the pensioners. You got lawyers that are selling us out. You got neophytes. It, they got to lose, and they don't want any help. You know, Big Daddy okay. got to do it by himself. So, so this, is the, this is the leadership. But what was all that money collected for? What was all that about? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's a whole lot of confusion, man. I mean, with the general city employees and police and type. And all I'm saying is we could not afford to vote for anybody that Mike Duggan endorsed and support. Now, you got people coming over to TV 33 from Mike Duggan's camp hosting shows, and they trying to BS the people like the preachers and the other uh, Duggan participants uh, have been doing since Duggan been there. And so if by them coming over to TV 33, and they mislead the people with false information, okay? You or I, because of the policy of TV 33, we can't talk about what they're doing. And see, that's the game that's being played on the people. Well, we and know that. We know that. You got Tara Defoe coming over there with a show, and she's right there with Mike Duggan supporting his policies and programs, that's hurting them. Okay? You got Marshall Bullock in District 1 as the city manager. He's running for state rep. So what needs to happen is we need to identify all the candidates from Mike Duggan's administration that's running for elected office who filed the $100 fee to run. They didn't get any signatures. Okay? We should identify them and educate the people so we do not vote for these folks from Mike Duggan's camp. All right. I appreciate that. Yeah, you're right. All right. Call you on the air. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. How are you, Dee Dee? Popping, popping, popping. You did go to court. You went to the uh, Court of Appeals, Okay. It took four Jones Day attorneys to fight you guys. You did over a hundred, um, not briefs. Objection. Objection. Yeah, objection. The, objection. The, they would stop Carl and wouldn't let him in the, uh, the courthouse, and we all would have to sign him. Objections. Okay. You do, what, 120 of those? Quite a few. Yeah. Okay. Research, I didn't have a life because I'd get a phone call, can you research this, can you research that, can you do this, can you do that. But by the time these cheating folks would catch up with them, i.e. with that Form 14, it took them two months to, to fix that lie. 
okay? And uh, all I'm saying is, like I said, on Theo's show, you can march, you go to court, you can research. But you got to do all of these things collectively. You just can't do one because, like you said, if you just go out there marching, they were up there in the window looking down at us per Crane's magazine. And when we left, they started laughing. Okay. They were not expecting us to go to. And another thing, and I'm going to let you guys go. Yes, they were in there talking about how they were going to be hurt, but that's not what got them. When we start talking about policies, procedures, and the law, that got them to scuffling. That and ran them out of go here. back again, which I do think we do, because they still got my $10,000 for my 13th check. Oh, yeah. Well, well, thank you. Still I'm there? just saying. Bye. Bye-bye. Appreciate it. Call us again. Go ahead, Carlos. You want to talk about that? Uh... Yeah, well, I thought I was going to get a little more time, but I'm going to talk about this $45 dollar parking ticket that they got out there which is illegal I received one and I went to court and I was amazed I just couldn't believe what I was seeing what I was seeing you know because when you get your ticket they tell you that you can go to court and you can have a hearing so I'm in court, and I'm, it's about, there wasn't a whole lot of people there. I think it was, wasn't no more than about four people there. And I'm sitting down, and I'm listening to the, the young lady. She's talking about she got a ticket. It was right in front of our house, and there wasn't no sign or nothing there. And I'm listening to the, the where it was a administrative judge that was there and that's all she was concerned about was how they was going to pay and I saw the, the first person that went there and I said well you know maybe just 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 maybe I said well it do look kind of bad but then when the next one went up there and the next one went up there that's all she was concerned about they didn't really usually when you go to court they ask you how you plead. Nobody was asking how they plead. Mm. Did they plead guilty or not? So I'm, I'm, I'm wondering. I said, well, what is it? Well, wait a minute. She didn't ask them how they plead. She didn't ask them what was they, but what really happened. And I'm just sitting there. And I'm, I'm saying, dog, man, this, this is like a nightmare. And it's just like a cash cow machine. Oh yeah. And I. Uh, you know, and I did a little research on this $45 ticket, and they talk about Kevin Orr because Kevin Orr is the one who proposed this $45 ticket. But I don't believe that it was never went through and proposed as a law, a legal ticket. See, when you raise something or you do something, there's a process that you got to go through. You got to have hearings, and it got to be published. None of this was done. At least I don't recall none of it being done. It wasn't. That was part of that lawsuit. He didn't follow the Administrative, administrative procedure, act. procedure Act. And see, the Administrative Procedure Act is what governs the procedure of any administrative agency. It tells you what you got to do. You know, you got to have uh, posted within 10 days. You got to publish it, and it don't become laws until after 60 days after you. <laughs> Which never happened, therefore it's not the law. But and guess where that money's going? Tell me. To a private company. Oh, what's the name of the company? You know, I don't even know. One of those guys, one of the companies that was suing doing bankruptcy, one of those companies, it could be going to the bank. Bank, yeah. Yeah. Could be because they got these different names. But what happened, ladies and gentlemen, they came in doing the swap deal. One of those companies 
doing the swap deal because so it could have been Goldman Sachs, yeah, uh, hmm. Chase Bank, any of those people that came in and say, well, you lost money on this derivative, and therefore they wanted part of the parking tickets, and so Kevin Orr gave that to him illegally. See, under the bankruptcy, they did a whole lot of scandalous stuff uh-huh. that was illegal. And we just don't know half of the stuff they have done. And the money does not go to the city of Detroit. It goes to what they call a lockbox, lock and it's box. transferred to some company that was part of what called the bankruptcy, so-called called the bankruptcy. And these people, in other words, here's what happened, ladies and gentlemen. Nobody lost any money but the pensioners. Nobody lost any money but the pensioners. They stole the rest of the city of Detroit stuff. And you say, what do you mean nobody? Well, the people are doing bankruptcy. If you owe somebody some money, they're not supposed to receive any money. Or it's cut down. Maybe they get 25% on the dollar, 10 cents on the dollar. They got all their money and more. So whatever they had, they got out of the derivative building, business with the city and went into the parking and they jacked the parking fees up from 20 to $45 and they keep all the money. See, now that's what I got to do. I got to go get this book that Judge Rose wrote called Ponzi Scheme. Yeah. And that's exactly what we're describing. Now here you got a majesty judge wrote a book during this time that they was doing this. Before. Right, yeah, right before, mm-hmm. right before, and you know, nobody's saying anything about it. So I got to go get the. I'm gonna get the book this week, if if it's still. Uh, well, Amazon in got it. You want to take another call? Yeah, we take one more call. Again. But we down on time. We're not gonna be able to take the call. We we're down on time. We appreciate you hanging on in there, caller. But we're down on time. And I'm your host, Hassan Aline. I'm co-host Carl Williams. But you know what? Okay, we're going to take. Tune in next week. But we're going to take the call. Now we got to go. We got to go.